Hey everybody, today's video is about cameras. This is a video that I've wanted to make for really a, a long time. I've had these cameras set up outside. Um, they've, been, they've been working great and they've all been hooked up with Home Assistant. So I've wanted to make this video for a while. What we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how I have the camera set up and also how I get them connected to my Roku. So that's why we're in the living room. We can see the TV back here. I have all of the cameras uh, connected to Home Assistant and then connected onto my Roku. From any of the TVs where we run Roku, we can see the camera feed. Let me show you how I did that. Let me show you how I have it all set up. Super easy. I really like this setup. I think you will too. I'll catch you on the other side. So these are the Foscam cameras that I'm using. They are, they're not power over ethernet because I have, I have outlets um, basically by, right, right under the eaves where I need to put all these. But these cameras are, I mean, they could be run over ethernet, but they are wireless. So I'm running wireless and then I'm plugging them in. There's a, there's an external plug here. We put them in our, we put all of this stuff into our housing that we've used for other projects. So we just put all this jazz in here. It keeps it all waterproof uh, and that works out great. So I have links in the description for the Foscam cameras. I'm really happy with them. The night vision is great. They seem to work. There's uh, you know all sorts of tilt mechanisms and spin mechanisms so you can position it however you like. I have them connected into a Synology. So there's a Synology surveillance system that I have all of the cameras registered to. So right now there's three of them. Uh, this is the fourth. The fourth one's gonna go up to capture the back. So the two sides of the house and the front of the house are currently being captured. And I like them. So these are, these are some really great cameras. Once all the cameras are set up, we then go to the Roku. The application we're gonna download is the IP Camera Viewer. I have the Pro Edition. There is a free edition that allows you to test out with one camera. The Pro Edition gives you four cameras, which is what I need. And for $5, I think it was $5, it's a really good deal. It's a great application. You can see, once you have all your cameras set up, you can put them all on screen or you can do one camera at a time. This is where you kind of choose that multi-view uh, screen. If you have a fourth camera, you would set it to four and then you can connect it in and you would see everything proportional on the uh, screen, which I really like. There's also a screen saver, which is, which is really, really slick. You can view the cameras individually and then you can edit them. Putting the cameras in was pretty straightforward. I just put the IP address of the camera, the name, the description, the TCP port for the Foscam is 88. Uh, I didn't have to do login or password. I actually just added that information into the stream URL. So I'll put the stream URL in the description. That was probably the hardest thing for me to figure out. I'll also put it on screen. But once you had that, um, you just basically click test, the image came up, and then you save the camera. What I did is I then just made a copy of each one of these and then just changed the IP addresses and a couple of information. But there's another way to do it is to actually um, go to that screen to add via computer and then you can hit the site. I'll show you that now. Just from a browser, you're just gonna put in the internal site that was on the Roku screen. And from here you can add in the camera name, description, IP, ports, and more importantly that uh, MPEG link. So this is pretty straightforward. You hit save, go back to your Roku. The unfortunate part is you have to do this for every Roku. Unfortunately, you can't export the information and then import it into the new Roku. So uh, for each Roku, you have to go in and add in all your camera information. But once you really have it in a notepad or whatever, you can just paste it into each one of the windows. It's pretty straightforward. What I did was once I created the first one, I just went back to the Roku and then I would just copy those cameras just to make the, the new ones and it worked really, really nice. We did have to set these, we had to set up the IP Pro in each, on each Roku basically. So this is a Roku TV, uh, I just downloaded it and we copied that URL and we uh, basically set this up 
for, for the bedroom. It's also the screensaver. There we go. So all three of these cameras came up. Once I have the fourth one, it'll fill out all of this. But we also use the screensaver. Let me show you that. So it would just preview the one camera. So unfortunately you can only have the one camera. I wish you could have it cycle through multiple, but we have it just set to the front so we can see the front of the house. Um, you know, when the TV is idle, it just flashes to this, which is, which works out really, really nice. You can change the settings, but you have to just pick one camera, unfortunately. They do have this animate, which it's okay. I don't, I don't, I don't use it. Oh. So this is what animate looks like. It's basically just pulls that small image and then floats it across. This is obviously to prevent burn-in, but we don't use this too much. Um, and there's enough movement on the screen in full screen that I don't bother with this piece. I'm just gonna change that back. So the app works really, really nice. We're just gonna launch this one more time so you can get a sense of what it looks like on the Roku. But what I also would like to show you is I can also view all the cameras from my desktop, from my Windows laptop. So let me show you that application. So this is the surveillance client. It shows all the cameras live view in the background. So I can leave this running on a monitor um, just in my normal workstation so I can quickly see a quick overview of the house. But I also want to show you the actual system. So there's two hard drives in this Synology system. They're both 3.6 terabytes. They're RAID 1, so my total storage is 3.6 terabytes because they're mirrored. If I lose one of those drives, the data would remain. We have three cameras in this system and they record 24 seven for 30 days. So we can go back up to a month to watch uh, any of the videos from any of the three cameras. We're gonna bring the fourth one in. Right now we're using just 36% of the storage uh, recording all of these cameras. And the system has been up for about 190 days. So no issues, it's extremely efficient. The data is safe, it's able to, it's all local, which is great. I don't have to send it out to a cloud, but I can also review it whenever I need to. In the next video, I want to show you how I bring all of these, all, all of this information into Home Assistant. So how we can view the cameras through Home Assistant and also how we can use, how we use the cameras as a motion detector for events and then trigger different things like lights and whatnot um, in Home Assistant. So click the link and I'll see you in the next video.